that. Now I want to get back to that jobs report. 943,000 jobs added in July. Let's bring in Labor Secretary Marty Walsh. Secretary, good morning. Um, it was a great jobs report, a lot more additions than expected, but still uh, a lot of openings out there. Your reaction to this, because I'm thinking two things. The first thing I'm thinking is 25 states said we're not going to have those supplemental job benefits anymore, and that got people back to work. And the second thing I'm thinking, want to get your thoughts on this, is do we need $4 trillion more in spending if the economy and the labor market are really picking up like this? Yeah, well, th thank you. First of all, thank you for having me this morning, sure. and thank you for your two questions. I think, just quickly, um, you know, a great jobs report, 943,000 jobs. Since President Biden's inauguration, 4 million jobs added to the economy. The last three months, over 800,000 jobs added to the economy. Uh, there's no indication at all that the $300, ending the $300 benefit, has added to the jobs report, uh, added to people entering to the economy. We've seen over the last three months, 800,000 people come into the uh, average of 800,000 people come into the into the workforce, and we had the $300 benefit in those spaces. Uh, and I do think one area that, that, that concerned me today was the nursing home and the health care sector. Uh, we lost, lost ground there, and, and that shows you right there that there's a big need for a CARES economy package to make investments in that area because people, quite honestly, are getting older in America and families are worried about where they're going, the parents are going to be, whether they're going to be cared for at home or in a facility, and the same for children. So I think that having, having these two packages that are moving through the, the legislature right now, one is the bipartisan infrastructure bill, that's about rebuilding roads and bridges and infrastructure. Uh, that's definitely needed in our country. You just drive around our country, you go to a city or town, you ask a mayor, they'll tell you. And then the CARES economy piece is also, these are long-term investments. So I think they're, they're very much needed uh, mm -hmm. in our country. Okay, four trillion, I mean, that's a hefty price tag. I hear you on investment. I think the, uh, some of the GOP leaders would say, yes, we need some of that investment, but maybe not that much. Um, let's switch gears for a moment and continue well, to talk let, about let me just Let me just real quickly, oh, you know, if, you talk to, if you talk to the American people, 70% of the American people think these investments are good and I think that it'll be the first time in, in, in almost a century that we're making a major investment in American people in this country in our economy in, in creating opportunities in, in certain job sectors as well as infrastructure so I think that that's well overdue if, if we had kept up on it over the last 50 years we wouldn't have to make the one-time investment right now Okay, well, I wanted to ask you about the Delta variant, but I'm going to stick with the point that you're bringing up because I think it's really important. Part of the issue with the $4 trillion in spending that we're talking about is inflation. That is a kitchen table issue that Americans are facing right now. Maria Bartiromo had the opportunity to talk to Jamie Dimon, uh, CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase, and he said that he doesn't believe that the inflation is temporary. Listen to this. Are you seeing inflation? Do you agree that it's temporary with what the Fed has said? I don't. But I'm also looking ahead. I think you still have a lot of stimulus that hasn't been spent and a lot more stimulus coming. You know, you can't, having fiscal deficit that big is un unprecedented, and that by itself almost has to be inflationary. It's fundamentally different than QE. And so I expect that'll drive a little bit. You see it in the wages now, and not all those people are going to go back to work. And so I think there's a portion which is temporary, and a portion which is probably not. Secretary, let me ask you is Jamie Dimon wrong on inflation? Well, I think, I think it, what I heard him say was that he's not sure if it's long-term or temporary, and, and I think that... Well, he I said think part that, of it is long-term and part of it is temporary, but well, there will be a again, lasting effect. Well, I, I think we're in a very unique situation right now we, coming out of a pandemic. This, this is something that uh, we haven't experienced in this country in 100 years. Uh, it's, this is not a normal recession. Uh, this is not something that's predictable. And I think as we think about moving forward, so I think as, as, as we continue to get more and more people back into the job market, uh, seeing we need to see more wages rise as well. We saw 4% increase in wages for people, which is a good thing, which allows people the ability to spend more money in our economy. And I think this is something that we have to keep an eye on as we move forward here. Yeah, we certainly do. Um, there's also this issue of the Delta variant. People are worried about that, that it might be sort of derail us from the progress that we've made with the economy, with the labor market, um, that vaccine mandates may come down the pike and, and maybe, you know, be an issue as well. Certain people don't want to get vaccinated or don't feel comfortable or can't do it. They won't go back to work. And then you add the dynamic here that the president has extended the eviction moratorium till October 3rd and you've got more reasons that people may not want to head back to the workplace. Well, I think I think if we got more people vaccinated and we were able to get the Delta variant under control, we, the president wouldn't have to do the moratorium, the eviction moratorium. And, and I do think that our policies are going to be driven by making sure we're keeping people safe and alive. Uh, prior to this, I was the mayor of Boston in the beginning of the pandemic. We saw rates in our hospitals go up high. We saw our hospitals in the city of Boston stopping elective surgery, stopping elective procedures, because we needed to have room for, for people that were COVID, COVID positive and sick and dying. 
Uh, right now, we're at a moment in point, in point in time that we can control the, the Delta variant by simply taking care of ourselves, by wearing masks where we're seeing increases in these, in these numbers, by getting people vaccinated. I just, for the life of me, I don't understand how all of a sudden vaccinations have become a political issue. They yeah. should not be a political issue. Uh, you know, it's too important. Whether you're a conservative or a, Demo or a, a, conservative or a progressive, it doesn't matter. If you, get, if you get vaccinated and you keep yourself safe and alive and your family safe and alive, that's what matters right now. Absolutely. And we do encourage people to get the shot in the arm if they haven't gotten it already. Uh, another one for you, Secretary. AFL-CIO President Richard Trumka yeah. passed away at the age of 72. He led the Labor Federation since 2009. Your reaction to this? Yeah, thank you for asking me. Um, you know, Richard Trumka was a great man. He started as a mine worker. He was down in the mines working, got his hands dirty uh, in a dangerous job, rose to the ranks to, to lead the, the, the mine union, uh, and then rose to the ranks to lead the AFL-CIO. He's going to be a big loss to working men and women all across this country. He loved this country. He loved working people. He represented, obviously, union members, but he also represented non-union members in the sense of always fighting for workers. And he will tr he's a truly a giant in the labor movement, and he'll be a giant they will be lost. Oh, thank you so much for that tribute. Secretary Walsh, wonderful to see you this morning. Thank you for your time. Thank you.